been for us over this past year. We are the 2023 Coming of Age group, and we are so grateful you are here to celebrate this special day with us, along with Pablo, our music arts director, Sheila, our religious educator, Shannon, our membership coordinator, and Reverend Sherry and AJ. Here at First Unitarian, our mission is through spiritual connection and community, we listen deeply to others and ourselves open to wonder and transformation, and serve with love and humility. We acknowledge with respect the Seneca Nation, keepers of the Western Door, and a part of the Haudenosaunee people on whose ancestral lands First Unitarian now stands. If you're new or new-ish here, please stop in at the welcome desk so we can help you connect. And if you're here today because you're going through a hard time or worried about someone else, please connect with a pastoral care chaplain during or after our service. If you don't know what Coming of Age is, it is a year-long covenant group that learns about Unitarian Universalism through group sessions, trips, and personal exercises. Our service today is a creation tale we designed together. How do all people become their beloved selves within the love of community? For us, this is the unfurling desire of Unitarian Universalism of the future. Now, as we settle into this sacred time and place, take a deep breath. We invite you to light a chalice wherever you are here in the sanctuary. We will light ours. Please join me in our unison words. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and mysteries of this great gift. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing our opening hymn, Moyaya. Now, before our story begins, you'll need to practice your part. There's a little bit of magic of life unfurling that we do as a community. So every time you hear this cue in the story, you're going to need to help the magic happen. Just 
is the sound of life growing and trees growing and our love unfurling. Once, there was an only child named Felix. Whenever they were lonely, they would go to their beloved grandmother's house and help her with her plants. Sadly, there came a day when Felix's grandmother passed away. Felix decided to take a seed from one of her gorgeous cherry blossom trees to remember her by. They carefully put the plain, brownish yellow seed in a jewelry box for safekeeping. After the loss of their grandmother, Felix never sought out the company of another child, or even adult for that matter. They kept to themselves and their plants. They became a wonderful gardener and cultivator, growing many beautiful plants to control the environment of their home and yard. But strangely, the one seed they never dared to grow was that plain, precious, peculiar cherry seed from their grandmother. Maybe it was because they were afraid of failing and growing it. Maybe they wanted to preserve it just as it was. Maybe they were afraid that when the tree would blossom, it would remind them of her so intensely that they would not be able to enjoy life for the grief of it. One cannot just say what unfurls or not in the becoming of a person. Oh, Felix, isn't it? Well, I've gone the past day or two with nothing but broth and crackers. My body is too frail to walk to town, and I really need some protein for energy. Please, if you would be so kind, trade at least a can of beans or some eggs with me. You said trade? I'll give you some food, but only if you give me something in return. Er, that is fine. I have a seed. The seed will grow a tree, your tree, and once you can grow this tree, your life will come easier to you. Not all your problems will be solved, but you'll get answers from that tree that, that some have taken a whole lifetime looking for. You want food for a seed? Special One seed. little seed? It's a special seed. Okay then, sure, why not? As Felix tries to cultivate their neighbor's seed, hoping to have some answers in life, we pause to greet our own neighbors here and online. Please rise or turn to your neighbor, and for those online, type in the chat and share. What is a question you would love to have answered by your neighbor's wisdom tree if you had been given one? What is a question you would love to have answered by your neighbor's wisdom tree if you had been given one? Stand up. Rise. Stand up. OK. So basically, something I would like to have answered is like, Please join me in chanting, Where Do We Come From?
grow. I've done everything I have to. I sure some plants die. I've usually fa always found a way that works. I already tried every trick and method I know, and that's a lot. How am I supposed to get my magical answers if the seed won't grow? What now? Twice in a month? Hello. I don't mean to intrude, but I noticed your window and thought I might be of some assistance. My window? Yeah, it's all boarded up. Oh, that. I needed a quick solution. I'd love to help. Are you sure? I didn't, I mean, I didn't call anyone for an estimate. Yeah, let me take a look at it. Whoa, you've got a lot of plants in here. Yep. Hey, I was given the seed after I helped a friend over in town. I'm not too good with plants. Do you want it? Uh, you're fixing my window and giving me a seed? Why? I like helping people. I mean, it's why I worked so hard to get into the carpentry business, so I could help anyone in need of shelter or repairs. So do you want the seed? Uh, sure. Hard for me to, one, hard for me to pass one up. The more the merrier. Plant the seed here so you can see it from your new window. So, you like your new window, eh? Yeah, thanks. I never really noticed how little sunlight I was getting having it boarded up like that. No problem. I'm glad to be of service. Enjoy your new scenery. Everything our church does for ourselves and others is po made possible by what we bring to it, our service, our time, our treasures. Each week we practice shared generosity to support the work and witness of Unitarian Universalism in Rochester, and half of our Sunday offering goes to a partner organization working to create a more just and loving world. Today we share our plate with teen empowerment through group facilitation, the arts, and collaboration with community members and leaders, teen empowerment supports youth as they proce process their experiences, heal from trauma, and then use their experiences as a platform to change the community for the better. Francis is currently a youth organizer. In the spirit of Thank abundance you. and generosity, our offering will now be received with gratitude. If you haven't already, you must begin to wonder at some point if there is something larger than yourself, naturally wanting you to somehow be more open to it. Hello there. I'm sorry. I was hoping you could help me. With what exactly? You see, I'm not from around here. It actually took me a few days just to get down here. I was supposed to meet my friends in town, and since it's super nice out, I decided to walk. I look, I mean, uh, look at the weather. It's gorgeous. Huh. Well, like I said, I was trying to get to town, and we're going to meet uh, there at, at another friend's place. 
and I hate being late. Is this story going anywhere, or are you just trying to waste my time? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I can get lost when I'm talking. Speaking of getting lost, that was why I need help. I'm very lost at the moment. I tried to follow the path, but I ended up in the woods, and I don't think I was following the right path. I mean, the way it was lovely, but what was the path kind of disappeared, and I found this house. So I was hoping you could help me find my way. Do you want directions or a guide? Because one of those is not happening. Some directions would be great. Got it. If I could give you something for your hassle, I have an assortment of small things I've picked out along the way. I can work with that. Where do you find this very interesting, some kind of seed in here? Oh, that's back from my home. You can have it if you would like. Uh, new plants are always welcome. I'll take it. Great, thanks. Now here, let me help you plant it properly. I invite you now into a time of meditation and reflection. Find a position that best allows you to imagine yourself as a tree, standing or seated, rooted with your feet or simply in your mind, just the kind you are, uniquely yourself. Be, a, be in this time in this space right here you are. A birch, a maple, a white pine, a cherry blossom tree, an apple tree, each as we know in our kind. Take a moment to scan your body, noticing any area of tension. You may want to gently adjust to bring more comfort to yourself. Let us collectively take a slow, deep breath in through our nose. Feel our lungs expand, then let out it with a long exhale. Imagine any tension flowing out of our bodies, down through our roots, into the soil, or out through our leaves back into the earth and our sky. Let us slow down as we are imagining ourselves as a tree in a grove of trees. You are powerful, beautiful, and solid in your own way. You are wise, you belong here. In a deep in the earth, winding around stones and pushing through many layers of safe, dark earth, connecting us all underground is a massive extension root system. As you become more anchored, you feel your tree body, your trunk, whole. You feel your branches extend upwards in many directions, reaching into freedom of the sky, letting go as your breath in our out. Feel tension from wherever it held. Feel it held by the wielder web of Kunchuk. How grateful we are to be rooted even when there is some disruption, smoke, haze, even when fair in the distance, it, the fires rage. We still have breath. We still can give back something to the world. With each benefit, our roots are breathing in rich nutrients of earth. She goes on giving. Feel the nutrient in your legs. You enter the system of your chest, your arms, hands, and finally your head. Be aware of this sense of oneness in the earth. Feel the sun's rays on our tree bodies, however slight or strong, still there in the ability to create in different ways. Sense that with patience and with others, collective hope matters. do it this way. Just listen to my idea. You never listen and it always goes wrong. Oh look, there they are. What? Oh, that's the gardener. Can I help you? I could hear you fighting up the whole road. You're the plant expert, right? Yeah. We need you to be the judge. Tell us who is right. And who is wrong. Sure, why not? What's the issue? She thinks she knows it all. That's what's wrong. She thinks she can keep waiting watering our new seedlings every day on her rounds. I keep telling her to stop. She's gonna kill them. Stop? Look who won't stop running her rounds. She just thinks you can let the seedlings sit there for a week with nothing. We spend a lot of money on these. They need care every day. 
Uh, it doesn't seem these two are the same type of seedling, are they? No, I don't believe so. But the correct thing to do with any plant is to overwater it once a week or so, so then it gets just the right amount. No, you're supposed to water it daily in little bits. You are all about shocking the poor things and then scorching them with thirst. Whoa, 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 whoa. You first. What kind are you? is the one you are holding? Linden. And yours? Willow. Okay, so can I offer something here? Watering needs really depend on the kind of tree. Willows need once a week for the first year of their life, then only as needed, as these linden saplings once or twice, once to twice a week to start. Oh, that's not what I was told. I mean, in my house, we always watered in bits, no matter the kind, and nothing ever died. Well, the consequence of doing what you've always done in that way may have an impact if you aren't actually sensitive to the differences in watering, never mind temperature, sunlight fertilizing, cutting back, and all sorts of factors. Something I would suggest is to research your plants. Some plants can be unpredictable, and being there through it all shows you genuinely care about them. Thank you for the insight. I can't do this alone. Can you and Justine help me? Taking care of something alone is a big task, and the help of my friends would make it easier. I'd also like some help starting off mine. Maybe we could use your garden? It's already equipped with the right fertilizer, and you are skilled. We could come by from time to time until they can be replanted with us. Sure, why not? We would love to help you plant them if you think they would be right for your yard. We now enter into ritual to bring what is in our hearts and lay it on the altar of community and spirit. Honoring the complexities of life, bring to mind whatever feels unfair, breaks your heart, needs mending from our common action. What is something you want brought to justice in your community for positive change? Online, you're invited to share in the chat and here in the sanctuary, find the small slip of paper under your seat. Raise a hand or ask a neighbor if you need help. Write a words, word or phrase of the positive change you want made for more equity and justice in your community and put it in the bowls of water on the tables. May we now share in this ritual of common hope for equity and justice and witness that we are not alone. Trust the movement, I negate the chaos, uplift the negative, I'll show up at the table again and again and again, I close my mouth and learn to listen, whoa, oh, oh, oh. I've pointed, the winds have shifted, it's all we can do to stay uplifted, pipelines through backyards, wolves howling out front, yeah, I got my crew, but truth is what I want, realign it on point, power to the peaceful, prayers to the water, women at the center, all vessels open to give and receive. Let's see the system brought down to its knees. Oh, oh, oh. thunder I'm made of lightning I'm made of dirt yeah made of the fine things my father always taught me that I'm a speck of dust and this world was made for me so let's go and try our luck I got my down 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 down
what has been done? What are you gonna do about it when the world comes undone? My voice feels tiny, and I'm sure so does yours. But put us all together, make a mighty the movement, I negate the chaos, uplift the negative, I'll show up at the table again and again and again, I close my mouth and learn to listen. My, uh, what's with people and showing up in my place this spring? Hi there. I hope you don't mind me admiring how healthy everything seems to be budding out. Even your clematis looks strong. Ah, uh, thanks. I'm Felix. Uh, you know gardening? Oh, Tamara here. You might say that. Well, I thought I did. I happen to be the director of the town cultivation crew. Oh, interesting. You seem a little down. What's wrong? To be honest, we have been growing our arnica field in the town's medicinal plots as usual, but this spring, something's wrong. The new shoots are coming up, but after that, they just dry up and die. I'm just beside myself. People really need it for their joint pain, and we will have no supply. Oh, I can help. I've worked a lot with arnica. In fact, my grandma used to grow her own, swore it kept her feeling youthful. Come on, I'll grab a few things, and we'll get it worked out today. And so it was, without hesitation, for the first time in Felix's life, there was an unfurling desire to show up for their townspeople. Felix assessed and discussed possibilities, listened carefully to both plants and humans, and in the end was able to offer a helpful and sound solution. Oh my god, I really want to thank you again. Here, take this tree as thanks from the whole town. It's a native here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to do something for the community for once. Uh, I'll be glad to add this to my collection. Well, I should probably get back to my house. I've had some strange visitations up there. I'd hate to miss one. <laughs> To be an activist is to show up for others. To be compassionate has been described as a defining characteristic of an interdependent self that prioritizes harmonious relationships over individual achievements. To be there for others and to be able to help is a gift. But before you pour into them, you need to pour into yourself and have others pour into you, as the twins and grandma and carpenter did for Felix. And look, and look what Felix ended up doing. They helped a medicinal company out of an herbal conundrum. To stand up for yourself and others is a gift from our universe. To have a voice in decisions that impact you is truly healing. I believe that showing up for someone is the greatest thing that you can do. Whether it's ordering food for your, new, for your best friend at a cafe because they're too nervous and have social anxieties, or offering to house another friend for the rest of the school year. But always keep in mind, you need people too. To have someone show up for you is one of the most amazing feelings in the world. To know someone is in your corner, no matter what, it's a beautiful thing. So even if it's just a hug or a high five, showing up is never wrong. But remember, you need someone in your corner as well. You can't do this alone, no matter how bad you want to. In the spirit of interdependence, our coming of age group passes on a rock to the next coming of age group with our names on it to bring on your pilgrimage to next year, symbol of our interdependence with those who have come before us. all these other seeds grow, yet you just won't. Why? What's so different about you? How are you doing, neighbor? Do you want something? I thought I'd come check on you. I haven't seen the tree I gave you outside amongst the others. That's because it won't grow. You gave me a useless seed. No, that seed is not useless. You just aren't caring for it in the way you need to. So I'm a bad horticulturalist now. I've cared for and grown so many plants before. I can't be the problem this time. It has to be the seed that you gave me. Well, if you want to give up, it's always an option. However, I think you'll find more joy in finally being able to grow that seed. Let's think about this logically, yes? 
I can see all these beautiful plants and trees outside. How did you get these to grow? Those, I was given those by some people who kept showing up in my house. They all insisted on helping to plant them. They all grew so beautifully. Why not try the treatment you gave for them? I have. I've done everything I need to. I can already see some clear differences. Oh, really? Like what? For instance, they are all outside and in the open, able to breathe. This seed, on the other hand, is inside. It's darker in an enclosed area. There's not enough room for it to stretch and grow in that pot. I've grown plenty of plants inside before. It's not going to be any different now. Keep in mind, this is a tree, so be realistic, my friend. But on the other hand, this one is different. Your old methods won't work this time. You have to allow yourself to open up just as much as you want this seed to grow. All right, Grandma, let's try this your way. <laughs> and so it was that Felix had insisted on planting it themselves and after a few weeks was even more disheartened. The tree of answers had not, in fact, grown at all. Come on, man. It's been a few weeks. There should at least be a sprout by now. Um, there's nothing I'm telling you. It's the seed. What is the other difference between this seed and all the ones over here? I don't know, okay? There is no difference. They're all plants. I know plants. Why else would everyone come to me with queries? I'll just tell you the difference this time. <sighs> you had help to plant these. So, what do you want me to do? What do you want from me? I want you to allow me to help. Fine. <laughs> it's looking a lot better already. Thank you for everything. I never thought to question my own methods. Turns out I do need help sometimes. Eventually, you have to try something new because you can't have all the answers and try to control all the variables all by yourself. The same methods won't work for everything. It's okay to try new things, to ask for help when it's needed. That's the beauty of nature. Change and growth were all a part of it. Yeah. Well, thank you again. I hope to see you sometime soon. Hey, I, uh, I have this, I've had this old seed in my house that I got from my grandmother when I was a child. It's rather plain, but I think that with the right care, it may still be able to become something ama quite amazing. Do you think you could help me grow it? I would love to, and I'm sure others would too. Oh. And so it was that the cast of visitors who had been part of Felix's becoming returned to witness and support this growing of their precious inherited seed. I'm the carpenter who gave you the maple seed, the symbol of generosity. I'm the traveler who gifted you the palm tree, symbol of pluralism. We are the old friends. I brought you the willow, symbol of equity. And I brought you the linen tree, symbol of justice. I am the townsperson who gifted you the cypress tree, symbol of our interdependence. I am your neighbor who helped you grow the birch tree, symbol of transformation. And I am the fertile ground of covenant that allows community to flourish. And I am every person of faith whose life is centered in love, symbolized by the cherry blossom tree. Thank you, all of you. I was so overwhelmed and annoyed by all this at first, but learning about and helping these plants and trees has really helped me. I feel like I learned more about myself along the way, like a connected kind of love that goes deep and underground. That, my friend, is the answer I was talking about. <laughs> the answers that some people spend their whole lives looking for, you were able to find more of who you really are within the care of your community. Take good care of these trees, and if you ever forget your place, place we're right, right here, here beside, beside you. you. Oh,
I'd like to invite our coming of age parents forward at this time. As our congregation's professional religious educator, I give witness to the truth that what we do in our, our religious education program is only part of what nurtures a child's religious identity over time. The primary religious educators of these teens are the adults in their lives who have committed themselves to bringing up these children in this faith tradition. Parents, you too are coming of age today. Your promise to your teen and dedicating them in this religious community is in part complete. You have, along with all of our support, tried to provide them the gift of a liberal religious upbringing. And all that you have done, you have lived as an example of this faith for them, the way you have created your household, the priorities you have set as a family, the experiences that you've shared with them, the difficult decisions that you've made in teaching them UU you values along the way. What courage and steadfast faith you have shown in the face of many parenting challenges of today's world, especially this past year. It is most fitting then that the real passage of a UU faith be marked by you. Teens, you are invited one by one to light a smaller chalice from your parents to symbolize your commitment to continue to grow this light of our faith in your own life. To listen, to open, and to serve. Don't worry, you are not alone in this. Your loved ones have prepared a secret collection of letters from those closest to you to remind you of this and to give you wisdom. As each teen's name is called, I'd ask any relatives, close friends, religious education teachers or guides, and community members who have been part of their growing up to reach out your hands towards the screen online or rise up in body with hands here to offer a special blessing of connection to them. And we begin. Kenzie Lang. Olivia Seckel. Francis Camioni Lind. Victoria Foos. And 
Claire Dorso. we have a tradition of dedicating babies and young children as they become a part of our faith community, committing ourselves to be the village that it takes to raise them. And at this time in their lives, it is our tradition to recommit, not just to celebrate their accomplishments over the last year, but to remind them that we still have their backs. We also know that teens can make some serious mistakes and that navigating the wider culture is difficult. And I want to promise and we want to promise them that they will not be forsaken. As you greet them after the service in coffee hour and perhaps now in the chat online, I invite you to share your personal blessings and encouragement with them. So now, will you, the congregation, rise in voice, body, and spirit and join me in recommitting to these youth as they come of age by shouting an enthusiastic yes if you agree with the following. We as a community of faith recognize the commitments that these youth have shown in coming of age this year. Do we pledge to support their ongoing spiritual development and cherish them? Yes! Do we as a community of faith take seriously their place in the long stream of Unitarian Universalists who have come through this way and commit to support them in living mindfully and loving faithfully as they navigate the world? In our interactions with them, do we pledge to be transformed through and work towards mutual liberation by listening, opening, and serving every day? Yes! As a sign, thank you. You may be seated. As a sign of our promise, our congregation blesses each one of our youth with a chalice necklace, the sign of our living tradition, a symbol of our beloved community and its strength, compassion, and joy. Youth, you are invited to wear this as a reminder close to your heart that you are forever welcome in this circle. Well, these kids are awesome. Let me start there. Woo! And I need to stop calling them kids and start calling them youth or young adults, so correct me right there. Um, I am so happy today because they are coming of age and also some of them have decided not only to live our UU faith, but also become members of our congregation. They will be supporting us just as we will be supporting them. Five of them actually have decided to become official members. Uh, and I'd like for you all to celebrate after I say all their names, uh, they're joining us. So first I have Victoria Foos. Victoria Foos, would you mind coming on over? Thank you. Miss Sheila's gonna do it. Nadia Hiller, Elliot King, Max Spence, and Olivia Seckel. Congratulations and welcome.
And a quick little surprise. Our youth have also completed our junior high OWL program, which is 25, 26 lessons in sexuality. So Mary, who's been their teacher since fifth grade, is gifting them some OWL socks. <laughs> that they continue to live in the world with responsibility, healthy relationships, and respect. And would you please rise in body or spirit and join in singing our closing song, We Shall Be Known. We'll sing it a couple times through. to stick around for connection after our service. We've got a lot going on. We've got uh, the Environmental Justice Ministry offering a plant-based diet conversation group. Uh, the Buddhists are meeting. The Pagans are meeting. We've got Parenting for Trans Children and Youth uh, group. And for all ages, we've got Chalice Fun for all ages happening upstairs in Gilbert. And now I hand it back to our youth to close out the service. This we carry in our hearts and shall we are together If you were to ask me for one word to sum up everything I am, I couldn't answer because I am everything, and so are you. We are all infinite and important. The universe molds itself around us as we mold ourselves around the universe. We all owe respect and are owed in turn. Let us go forth knowing that our lives unfurl in this mutual respect. <laughs> 